Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Penny, and on this channel, I talk about books, mental health, and lifestyle. Today's video is going to be a relatively quick one. I'm doing my weekly wrap up. I'm going to be talking about the books I read, and then also about how my mental health has been. It's something that I talked about on my blog every week that I want to transition into the channel because people seem to enjoy it. So let's get on with it. So first up, we'll touch on my mental health. As some of you know, I am bipolar. I recently stopped taking a mood stabilizer, which has been interesting. Uh, so a lot of people with bipolar are put on anti seizure drugs. Um, and that's what I was on. The one I was on was, I'm going to put the name of it on the screen because I, I butcher it every time. But I was on a pretty strong dose. Um, I was taking about 600 milligrams per day. And for the first week or so, it was doing great. And then after a couple of weeks, I started having really bad side effects like brain fog, hand tremors. Um, extreme fatigue and general just not feeling well. So I went back to my psychiatrist and she was like, you don't need to be on this kind. So I've been, or we've been reading me off of it. It's a slow process. So like every week I would cut my dose basically in half until I got done to nothing. And this past week has basically been the first week that I'm not on a mood stabilizer. At the moment, I'm only on Robutsun and Lexapro. So it's been interesting. Um, <laughs> there are definitely withdrawal symptoms when you go off of a drug like that. So it's been fun, not really. <laughs> but um, basically I've been having some more fatigue, um, confusion the first few days that I went off it, which is a common symptom of stopping your anti -convulsant. Um, But I'm feeling better now, so that's good. And I kind of like that I'm just on the Well Beats one and the Lexapro right now because it seems to be doing okay. Um, I have a little more energy. I'm a little more positive for the most part. Of course, I still have my ups and downs as anyone with bipolar disorder is going to. But I've been doing better, so hopefully that means a lot more videos, a lot more Instagram posts and blog posts, so keep an eye out. If you guys have any questions about bipolar disorder, let me know in the comments or email me. Um, my email is on this in the description box and you can reach me through my blog. I'm happy to answer any questions about it. I am going to be doing a video later this week where I talk about being diagnosed as bipolar and kind of the hints I had throughout the past decade or so that I might have it. So look forward to that. Again, ask me anything you want to know about it. I'm always happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, so now let's get to the books. So I read six books this week. All of them I liked. Um, I didn't give anything below a three star rating, which is awesome. And let's get into it. Before I do though, if I have a review on my blog for any of these books, I will leave it linked down below. And I'll also leave um, links to the books themselves on Amazon down below. Okay, so the first book I read is a kind of silly one, but it was super cute. And even though I don't have kids, one day I do want kids. So I've been kind of building a little bit of a collection of kids books. So an Amazon recommended this one to me. I bought it immediately. So this is Too Many Tremors by Frank Berrios. It's of course based on the episode of the classic Star Trek, um, The Trouble with Tremors. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a little golden book. I'm sure all of us have had hundreds of these in our lives. And it's just a cute, very simplified version of that. So the art is really cute. It's very colorful. It took me about three minutes to read but it was super cute and I will definitely be reading this to my future kids. Gotta get in the Star Trek early on. So next up we have a book that I received from the publisher from um, Mariner. 
so i'm very thankful that they sent this this to me it is one that i actually requested because it had like a post-apocalyptic dystopian vibe to it which is my favorite genre of any kind of fiction and that is Sorindora by Ray Luiga. Um, so this is actually translated from Spain and it is a popular book in Spain. So it's coming out in America. Actually, it just came out February 25th. So this book takes place in Spain and it follows an unnamed man and his wife. We never learn the names. Which is a plot device that I don't hate. One of my favorite books, Carmack McCarthy's The Road, is very similar to that. You never learn the name of the boy and his son. And I like that plot device sometimes because it lets the reader fall into the story and more easily imagine themselves in that role. I don't feel like that happened with Surrender. It was still interesting. I just don't think it mattered as much that you never knew their names um so this book is set in spain and there's a war going on but they never really explain who the war is with why they're fighting it but it has been going on for a very long time and when we meet the man and his wife they have recently found about a seven or eight year old child in the woods by himself so they adopt him um he never speaks so they don't know his name, where he comes from, what his story is, and they just randomly name him Julio. So one day, um, some representatives from the government come in and tell them that they have to evacuate because the bombings are getting closer to the home. And the three of them leave for the transparent city. And they don't know what to expect. They're not really told anything. They're told that they can bring one small suitcase with them. Um, one picture of each of their kids, and that's it. Everything else will be provided. They can't even bring medication with them because that will also be provided. So them and the other people in our neighborhood or community get on buses and go to the transparent city. Of course, there are a lot of road roadblocks along the way, um, and that is interesting. You get to see a little bit more of the society and the war that's going on. And then eventually you do come to the transparent city, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a massive man-made structure of glass. Everything is glass. You can see literally everything from bedrooms, bathrooms, hallways, basements, everything is transparent. So if you look above you, you see hundreds of other apartments. If you look below you, you see hundreds of other apartments. It's huge and full of people and they're not really told anything. Um, basically, they're given simple jobs to do and they're provided with food, medicine, anything that you'll need. And most people don't question it. The main character does start to get a little concerned with what's going on. And that's basically what we have in this book is his discovery of maybe that... Um, or his discovery that everything isn't quite what it seems. Overall, I really liked this book. I ended up giving it three stars. Originally, I was going to give it five because I loved it up until the last couple of chapters. Um, the ending makes you question the sanity of the main character, and I really didn't like the ending of this. I felt that it didn't really fit with the overall story, and I don't really understand what the author was going for with this. I'm still trying to think about this book and what I want to say about it in my full review on my blog, so that's not up yet. But I don't know, it's one of those books that the ending would have made it either way and it just didn't work for me, so I ended up giving it three stars. If you like dystopian novels, it might still be worth checking out. Um, now I will say this is an ARC, so it's an advanced copy that's not been edited fully. So I don't know if it's a translation error or if it's something they ended up fixing in the finished copy. But some of these sentences are paragraphs long and it's really distracting um, because it's just 
these sentences could have been made into five or six different ones but for whatever reason it's just a long one-on continuous sentence and it's really annoying i found myself really distracted by that while i was reading it but if that doesn't bother you definitely pick this up it's interesting at least and if you get the ending let me know so next we're going to talk about two of the three poetry collections i read this week first up is Mary Oliver's The Turo Bear and Other Adventures Poems and Essays. So this is the first collection of Mary Oliver poems that I've read and I enjoyed it. It wasn't breathtaking, it didn't blow my mind or anything like that. I ended up giving it three out of five stars. I liked it, it was fine. I would probably read it again. I am going to read some of Mary Oliver's other poems. Um, this whole collection is about nature and the animals in it and it's beautifully written and the imagery is really beautiful and there's actually a really cute set of poems at the very end I think it's 12 poems in all where she just talks about her dog and it's so sweet how much love she has for the dog and um, her observations of his personality and habits it's a really cute read there are two essays in here. One of them is really interesting and probably my favorite thing about the whole book. It's called Swoon and it's about a spider. She so watches the spider as it lays a few egg sacs, as it kills a cricket and eats it or consumes its life force. Spiders are hella creepy. But um, I like that essay because, what am I trying to say? Um, I really like it because it's so easy to ignore the little details in nature, like the way a spider spins its web, um, the behavior of little insects and stuff like that, that typically we would just ignore. And it was so nice reading the reflections of someone who was watching those tiny insignificant or seemingly insignificant moments and it just brought to mind times in the past where I would be sitting in the woods not doing anything not actively hiking just sitting there and experiencing it and when you do that there's so many beautiful things that you notice that you would not have otherwise so that really resonated with me there are a few other poems I really like, but overall, um, again, it's nothing amazing. It didn't, it's not one of my favorite collections, but if you're into nature writing and poetry, you will probably love this, so definitely pick it up. Okay, so actually, this is not a poetry collection. Um, it's actually a graphic novel. This is your illustrated guide to becoming one with the universe by Yumi Sakugawa. This is exactly what you think it is. It's a graphic novel about oneness. So it's, I love the artwork and it is very simple. It's all black and white and it's a very quick read. Um, I ended up giving this three out of five stars because I enjoyed reading it, but I didn't really take anything away from it. I think some people will definitely resonate with this more than I did. It's a little too woo-woo for me, like new age spirits or stuff, um, which I'm open to, but this, this didn't speak to me on that level. Again, I did enjoy it. The artwork is amazing. There are some really cute uh, sections in this that I enjoyed about meditation. So yeah, it was fine. Um, I do recommend it. I just think that it's definitely not going to be for everyone. But if you're into spirituality and feeling one with the universe, you might really enjoy this. Um, so I do have a link to it down below. Okay, so we're going to finish up with my two five star books of this week. And the first one is Live Oak with Moss by Walt Whitman and illustrated by Brian Selznick. Now, um, I did talk about this book in my March wrap up and the fact that I picked it up because of its very unique format. So it does have a poem in it, but um, 
is actually told through illustrations. And the illustrations are beautiful. You might recognize Brian Selznick's name because he did illustrate the paperback black and white editions of Harry Potter. Um, but I loved this. I did read some Walt Whitman poetry back in high school, but I didn't think I liked classic poetry. But reading this, I was reminded of how beautifully Whitman writes. And I really enjoyed this collection of 12 poems. They are obscure. Um, they were discovered after his death in a little hand-sewn book that he created. And it's about his love of men and his relationships with men in New York City. It's beautifully written. It's very passionate and very personal. You, we feel like you're reading his diaries almost. Um, so it's very moving. And taken with the illustrations, you really get a sense of what he was going through when he wrote these. It's a beautiful book. Um, I am going to be getting a copy. I love the gold leaf edges. I love the naked hardback. I love the poem itself. Everything about this is beautiful. Even if you're not typically into classic poetry, I would still recommend this. It reads very almost modern in a sense. It's easy to understand and it's such an enjoyable and beautiful read. And finally, my favorite book that I read this week is Nell Susterman's The Thunderhead. This is the second book in his Scythe trilogy. I'm currently reading The Toll, which is the final book. I'm not going to say too much about this because it is a trilogy and I'm going to be doing an entire review video when I finish The Toll. Um, but this is a dystopian book set in a world where we've cured death. Basically, people have become immortal. And an organization of scythes are created to glean or to control the population through killing people. And this entire series follows two apprentices, Rowan and Sitsa, who end up taking very different paths through this organization. And it's one of my favorite YA books that I've read in a very long time. It actually doesn't read like young adult. Um, it is pretty dark. So it actually reads more like an adult book that just features young teenage characters, about 17, 18 maybe. But everything about this I loved. The ending of it shook me. Um, so I started, we started the last book the very next day. But this series is so incredible. I would love to see this adapted into like a TV show or a movie. It's so amazing. I feel like I keep saying that. I can't stress it enough though. If you haven't read this and you like science fiction or dystopia, you are really missing out. It is amazing, solid five stars. I will definitely be rereading this over and over again. I almost want to like restart it as soon as I finish, but I probably won't. But this is definitely one of my favorite books that I've read in 2020 so far. So there you have it. These are the books I read this week. Um, if you read any of these, let me know what you thought of them down in the comments. And again, if I have any reviews on my blogs for these, I will link those in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your afternoon. Bye!